Welcome back. Okay, you have stuck with me <laughs> this far into the wilderness of complex analysis, so I commend you. Um, we have just derived the Cauchy integral formula, uh, which really relies on a lot of concepts uh, in complex analysis, like analytic functions, uh, kind of the multi-value property of logarithms and things like that. It's a pretty simple formula, actually. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is start to show you examples of kind of cool and gnarly integrals that you can solve pretty easily using uh, this formula and some of the other things I showed you, like the cauchy gorsaw formula. Okay, um, and I also recognize that a lot of you uh, who are watching may very well um, you know, be taking a complex analysis class and are being asked to do these heinous integrals. And so I'm there for you um, and I'm there with you. I personally find these to be pretty fun actually. Um, I think it's kind of cool that you can do uh, the, these gnarly transformations using these uh, kind of this building on this infrastructure um, that you know Cauchy and Gorsaw and Riemann and others laid out you know a couple hundred years ago. So I'm going to start with an example. I'll probably break this up. I might break this video up into like three or four little examples so that they're short. I might make one big mega massive. Uh, all the examples, we'll see. Um, the first example I'm going to make real easy. Um, so and it, this is essentially just an example of how to use the Cauchy integral formula. So let's say we have a function f of z equals um, one over z squared minus three z plus two. Uh, I'm getting this basically straight from my lecture notes. Uh, I'll probably post a link to the PDF uh, on um, on these videos, this is the function I'm going to do. And we know that this, uh, we can break this up, we can factor this, this uh, denominator into one over z minus one times z minus two. So we say that this thing has singularities or poles at poles at z equals one and two. So the, these kind of first order singularities like one over z minus a, we call that point a a pole of the system, a pole of the system, it's a first order singularity, a pole. And those are the ones that have that uh, kind of important residue that integrates up to something like two pi i, okay? Uh, you can rewind to the previous lectures uh, to kind of see how this was derived. Probably the last two lectures are the important ones. Um, so it's important to note, uh, I'm just going to say note, 1 over z minus 1 is analytic everywhere except for z equals 1. So 1 over z minus 1 is analytic at uh, z equals 2, and similarly 1 over z minus 2 is analytic at z equals 1. They're just not analytic, 1 over z minus 1 is not analytic at z equals 1, 1 over z minus 2 is not analytic at z equals 2. Uh, good, and so the Cauchy integral formula will apply if I'm integrating around z equals two, this part of the function, uh, the one over z minus one, is analytic at z equals two. And similarly, if I'm integrating around z equals one, this part of the function is analytic at z equals one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna co cook up uh, three different contour integrals and we're gonna get a feeling for how, how to do this. So uh, in the complex plane, Right, we have uh, our real axis, our imaginary axis. Sorry, I've been filming for five hours straight. I was gonna tell you, <laughs> I've been doing complex analysis. This is a Saturday. Uh, we are about to move uh, our family and I have been filming for five hours straight. So that's how with you I am <laughs> in your complex analysis integral class. So uh, pay attention because I might, you know, I might make some, some uh, I might have some issues depending on how smoothly this goes. These are our poles at minus one and minus two. Those are the only singularities of this function f of z. And so I'm gonna define a few different contour integrals uh, and play around and show you how to use this formula and other things we've learned. So the first contour integral I'm going to do, let's make this blue. Uh, I'll do a contour integral around this point. We'll call that contour one. Uh, I'll do a contour integral around the second point. We'll call that contour two. I'm gonna do a contour 
three, sorry, it's so squeaky. I know this drives some of you crazy, uh, keeps me alive. Okay, this is gonna be my contour three. It's gonna surround both of these singularities. Oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? And then I'm gonna do another contour, contour four, which doesn't include either of those singularities, okay? Now, I think we know to some extent that the integral around contour four is going to equal zero, right? Because that was the original, um, the original, um, kind of cauchy gorsaw theorem or theorem for analytic functions, this function f of z is actually analytic here. And so the integral around this closed loop away from these singularities around C4 is gonna equal zero. We know that's true from prior theorems. Um, let's talk about how to solve this first integral C1, because that's really what we're gonna use the Cauchy integral formula for. So um, we're gonna do this integral of, um, around C1 of f of z dz. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is equal to the integral around C1, that singularity is uh, z minus one. It is some function which is one over z minus two, which is in fact analytic around this point z equals uh, I'm sorry, this should be a plus one. And <laughs> I told you how tired I was, <laughs> plus one and plus two. This is plus one in the real direction, plus two in the, the uh, real direction are the two poles. Um, so I'm gonna break my function up into one over z minus two, that's kind of this function that's analytic, divided by z minus one. So in the Cauchy integral formula, this top part, the, the, the numerator, one over z minus two, that's gonna be my function that's analytic around, uh, around this, this base point A, which is A equals, uh, A equals one. And yeah, so, so essentially here, we're saying, um, in this case, you know, A equals one in the Cauchy integral formula. So we can split this up into one over z minus one, so a equals one. And the other part of the, the function, one over z minus two, that is actually analytic near a equals, a equals one. So this is analytic, this part is not. And we integrate this up, we're going to get what pops out, hopefully, is gonna be two pi i times this part of the function, the analytic part, evaluated at z equals one. So if I plug in z equals one, I get one over minus one, which is minus one, so this is minus two pi i. So I'm pretty sure that the integral of c1 around this point of this function is minus two pi i. That's how you use the Cauchy integral formula, okay? Let's do the same thing uh, for the second contour c2. Maybe I'll mix it up uh, and I'll do uh, yellow. So if I now have the integral around C2 uh, of f of z dz equals integral around C2. In this case now, the kind of a point, the point that uh, my singularity occurs at is a equals two. And now I'm gonna split this up the opposite way. So the part of this function that's analytic at z equals two is one over z minus one. So one over z minus one is actually analytic at z equals two divided by z uh, minus two. And so now I can use the Cauchy integral formula, dz, sorry, this should have a dz also, uh, dz. And that's gonna equal two pi i times this function, this analytic part of the function, evaluated at z equals two. So if I plug in z equals two here, I get one over one, so my f of a is just times one, so two pi i. So the integral around c1 is two minus two pi i, the integral around c2 is plus two pi i, good. C3 is pretty interesting. Uh, the way I think about C3 is the following. How do I wanna do this? Um, I'll show you how I think of, of, of C3. This is kind of um, using that surgery kind of procedure I showed you. So if I have, um, you know, if I've got my complex plane and I have my singular points here 
and here, and I have C3, which was this curve C3. My function is analytic everywhere outside of these two pink uh, crosses. And so I can d continuously deform this C3 curve using the cauchy gorsaw theorem until it's essentially like this tiny little orbit, almost like a dumbbell around those two singularities. So I have you know, this curve and this curve, and then I'm going you know, left on this straightaway and right on the straightaway. And if I deform those enough, these straight segments kind of cancel out. They kind of, you know, they're, they're super close to each other. It's in an analytic region, so it's smooth and differentiable there. And so if I bring them infinitesimally close together, they cancel out. So C3 is really the integral of C3 of, you know, f of z dz is really equal to the integral of C1 plus the integral of C2, uh, you know, plus these little intervals. This is, you know, Ci plus and Ci minus, and those are gonna cancel each other out, so I'm not even gonna write them down here. But we know that, ugh, it's getting messy. We know that the integral around loop one is minus two pi i, and the integral around loop two is plus two pi i. So if I add those up, if I shrink wrap this down and I add up the residue around this from this part of the Cauchy integral formula and the residue from this, uh, from this part of the Cauchy integral formula, what I end up getting is you know, plus two pi i minus two pi i cancels out. So the integral around C3 is equal to zero. Those are the kinds of tricks you can play in the complex plane using things like cauchy gorsaw and Cauchy integral formula. So C1 is minus two pi i, C2 is plus two pi i, C3, they cancel out to zero because they have the same like equal and opposite residues. Um, and C4 is kind of the easiest one, the integral around C4 of f of z dz uh, equals zero because F is analytic everywhere inside and on that curve. So we knew this from, from the earliest days uh, because it's analytic, it solves cauchy riemann which means that this integral has to, to add up to zero. You could apply Green's, you know, Green's theorem and uh, cauchy riemann makes this equal to zero. Okay, this is one example of how you use Cauchy integral formula to integrate you know, functions that have singularities uh, kind of you know, at different places around different, different orbits. Okay, good. Um, we could not have deformed C3 to not include those singularities because you can't deform a, a continuous orbit through a singularity. cauchy gorsaw only allows you to deform in regions where the function's analytic, so you can't cross through these red points. So I couldn't like move the C2 over here. It has to stay kind of topologically surrounding that, that point. Okay, so that's an important point. Okay, this is one example. We're just gonna kind of ramp up. Next example is gonna be a little gnarlier. I might have to erase my board twice. And then we're gonna keep going. I probably have three more examples of, of gnarly integrals, so stay tuned.